So next talk will be by Delib, um, organizing Debian face uh, peer to peer facilitation training. So can folks hear me? I'm looking to IRC for responses because I will not have any sound from Jitsi. So just let me know. Is this ready? Good. So I will start my talk. Uh, if you're noticing my screencast, I have an org mode file up just to let you know that no, I have not made slides. I am just publishing my raw notes such as they are for today. Uh, that's what we get out of a short lead time on my talk. Great. Uh, so here we go. And again, I apologize. I would not attempt to read all these notes. They're probably too small for you on your screen. Uh, but if they're recorded, if you want to look at them late, later, I'm exposing my typos for your benefit so you can see more about what I'm saying, if that's helpful. Uh, I wanted to introduce myself a little differently this time. And this is uh, starting with DebConf 14, when I was available for the content team and the global, DebConf global team, uh, when they were needing help on agenda setting for a meeting that was looking like it was going to be very difficult. We met uh, over lunch. I made suggestions about how to generically set up good agendas. Uh, the next day, I attended the meeting from the back and didn't really participate or have my name on anything. Uh, but it went really well, and I was surprised they actually used just the generic template I suggested. Uh, based on that, uh, and conversations after I ended up being invited for a keynote uh, talk in Montreal on the topic of when do social issues matter in technical debates and when they don't matter. And there I had technical issues with with a, an obsolete uh, laptop I was trying to use. Uh, and so the recording has a lot of stuttering in it in terms of my presentation, but the content is good and uh, you might be able to find that if you're interested. Uh, and the reason I'm talking about those talks is because all along I've been thinking about Debian as a community learning how to communicate better inside itself because from my point of view, it's the starship example of what democratic discourse can do. And the rest of the world needs these examples. So while Debian struggles with its own issues and publicizes those issues uh, through completely open threads and on many levels, uh, meanwhile, this is an important conflict. Uh, it's an important conflict resolution process that the community is going through for itself and what it learns is helping others. So this has been my ongoing thought of how I can continue to help Debian with this process. So today's talk is a continuation that I was hoping to bring up more at uh, Debian uh, 18 Taiwan uh, when uh, that was my intention for DebCamp, actually, and I ended up getting sucked into uh, food issues that needed to be covered because there were translation and, uh, in my case, important food issues. So I ended up doing food team things, which felt like a gender problem, honestly. Um, uh, and I was angry and resentful because I really had this other communications work that I was wanting to work on. Uh, so that was two years ago. You know, I just want to let people know that this is something I've been thinking about. So today, I want to talk about the possibility of Debian perpetuating its own internal uh, communications training among its own membership. And it doesn't need to be just Debian internal. It could be sistering with other you know, outside uh, free and open source software communities uh, who are uh, also dealing with online communications and training each other. So it doesn't have to be just internal to Debian, but I want it to be fo Debian folks to really have an investment in it and be able to do it. And some of the examples uh, that I'm drawing from are from community development, 
uh, of various sorts. Um, just an anecdote, uh, I was looking for notes on uh, such a group that I had set up for a co-housing community uh, back roughly 2005 or six, and when I looked back at my notes this week, I saw that I had told them that they should learn from the software developers about issue tracking and that kind of thing. Um, so that's those are my introductions. Uh, let's see here. I want to talk about. I'm going to jump around a little bit from my original outline here. Uh, I was also going to mention that I was available for the anti-harassment team in Taiwan. Uh, that's just background, just to let you know that I have gotten involved with a few issues and, and seen what's going on from the inside in a number of ways. Uh, plus, I've been paying attention to Debian since 2003. Uh, something that came up when I was hearing uh, the sessions the last uh, day or two is uh, when hearing about the communications team, um, I am looking at IRC. Nope, they don't need me. Um, when thinking about the communi new communications team, which used to be the anti-harassment team, uh, I am seeing that that team will need to become more formal. And meanwhile, while issues become, while Debian becomes more important, the issues become more central stage, more legal issues become more crucial uh, to the overall reputation. Uh, and I'm going to see that, I believe I'm going to see that communities team get more and more pushed towards a regulatory role. And by suggesting that there be more peer-driven uh, communications training within Debian that's not from a judicial, you know, decision-making policy setting group about what is and is not okay, uh, have most of that uh, nuts and bolts kind of work happening to help prevent those issues from coming up to that kind of level where you end up needing something equivalent to policy, uh, technical policy decisions being made on the communications policy end. Because that will, that is coming up, that is needed, but um, the rank and file need to be able to self-facilitate. An example I have for that is uh, a story uh, from Another community that I believe uh, developers should be aware of, and it's large and it has a lot of literature and that's helpful, and that is the secular use of Quaker uh, consensus decision-making uh, models. So I'm calling it secular consensus, uh, secular Quaker because it's not from the Society of Friends necessarily and they're spiritual communing that they do through, you know, e e egalitarian speaking from inspiration. This is more about a nuts and bolts, how to run consensus meetings and do policy setting and do governance of important organizations and large organizations through this kind of formal consensus. Uh, it'll be called a number of different things. Uh, meanwhile, Within that community, there's this idea called uh, facilitating from the back benches. And facilitating from the back benches uh, refers to someone or uh, who is not up front uh, doing something that in Debian is usually called moderating. Uh, it's not somebody moderating up front. It's one or more people in the audience uh, or from the circle who are asking questions and making comments that in fact facilitate the group. And you know, they didn't even need it. And what I had to tell them was, no, you actually didn't do the facilitating because you weren't, you know, this is like a, a trial run for the trainee. And I said, actually, they saw that you weren't doing the steps that needed to be done. So they were doing it from the back benches. People were asking the questions, making the comments and making the suggestions that everyone kind of sort of knew 
were legitimate things for a facilitator to say to keep the conversation going. So this is the kind of uh, mass movement that I'm envisioning that uh, Debian developers could help engender within their own communities. It won't be everybody. Um, computer uh, technicians uh, often, uh, as a personality trait, prefer the clear, uh, straightforward, or at least problem-solvable communications you get from a computer and do not appreciate the, the thousands of different factors that need to be taken into account at once when you're dealing with real people. Um, it's Dealing with real people is much more complex than a computer. So there will be people who are good at that, and they're not always very active in Debian now and might be in the future. So what I'm talking about is... Um, bringing those folks in Debian who are known for being uh, better communicators and respected and appreciated and able to <laughs> pass things on, at least by example, uh, bringing them into circles of learners who are then passing that on. So here we go. Uh, so the concepts of facilitating from the back benches. Uh, let's see, I'm opening my horrendously huge org mode file here. My apologies. Okay, so here are some examples that I've written that you won't try to read, I hope, um, of ways in which a group can be made self-perpetuating. So for example, uh, so let's say you start with a small group. It's an affinity group style, meaning that these are people who have some affinity for each other. They can work with each other. Uh, it's voluntary. Uh, it doesn't have to be voluntary, but I'm picturing something that's voluntary because that will make a lot of the hurdles easier to deal with. Um, it, uh, and for Debian, it wouldn't make sense to be non-voluntary. Uh, actually, wait a second, I'm going to back up. Voluntary is important because it allows the participants to support the group and know that each other are all trying to be uh helping each other. If you force someone to go through such a training, uh, yes, you can force their presence, but you can't force their will to be nice <laughs> and to help each other learn and get through this. So in the easiest uh, ideal situation, I'm suggesting everyone be voluntary. Uh, people come in with if they're all getting to, if it's rolling admission, it might be different, but let's say you're all starting at once and you're going to do a one month, once a week. So you're going to do a four session training and you're all starting in the first week. So I'm suggesting people could come in with their original stated concerns or interests such as um, I have harassment concerns or I have moderating skill concerns or I'm wondering what are best practices in issue tracking communications, that kind of thing. So those interests are what guide that participant's study and also are guide that participant's future contributions to the group. Trainers, uh, may you might bring in an outside trainer. I would suggest first starting with people who are considered good at uh, communications training inside the community. Uh, but the trainer's role is to set up each, to hear those participants mention their interests and their concerns and point them to resources that they can study on their own. So it's a little bit of mentoring or tutoring to help those f folks follow their own goals. Um, also, if everyone's starting at the same time, then that first session can include scheduling future dates. So the idea here, I'm getting really specific, but these things are very flexible. The point I'm making here is that folks are coming in, introducing themselves to each other, saying this is who I am and what I'm interested in, but uh, it, taking that not as an audience or a, you know, a, a, a receptive student's perspective, but take that from, okay, this is an active participant that you're trying to take advantage of and make sure that their contribution helps this thing along, find out what they're interested in and get them, you know, get their wheels on the road to actually making traction, getting traction and actually bringing back the results of their research into the group uh, so we can learn from them. Um, 
And then the those presentations that they make later are just small presentations, maybe 10 minutes or less, depending on the context and the size of your training. Um, but they're really just to get the conversation rolling and to point people towards resources that they've found, uh, or maybe to get the group to talk about topic questions that they have about these things. Uh, another thing to consider in this uh, type of training is that you have rotating roles, that people are actually dog-fooding the process. Uh, someone's doing timekeeping, someone's doing note-taking, someone's actually the facilitator who has, you know, somebody who has best experience available is the con facilitator, a convener, which is somebody who actually makes sure the venue is available, um, uh, whatever that would mean if it was online. Um, so basically, you're splitting up a complex role into subparts so people can get experience with those small points. Because believe me, having to combine time tracking, uh, scribing, note taking, and calling on people, and you know, calling a meeting to order, those takes a huge amount of your brain and nervous system to do. So breaking those small things up so that people can uh, practice. Now what I have is some um, content ideas, and let me see if I can find them. Okay, here. I get a time check here. Okay, I see it. So possible topics. So let's pretend again, you have a group of people who've decided, okay, you know, there's only three to five of us, but let's try this and see if it works. Okay, here's a recommendation of how you might start. Let's say you're going to have four meetings. In your first session, you're just gonna talk about big, per big picture stuff. Uh, why are we having the training, the importance, what kind of resources are we going to use, reading, videos, what have you. Uh, scheduling future events, and then talk about some philosophy, some theory, you know, where is Debian in this stuff? Why do we need it? Um, and that way, because this topic is so broad, because all these four topics are so broad, people with their individual concerns can gear it towards what they're interested in. Maybe it's anti-harassment, maybe it's issue tracking forums, that kind of thing. Second session, concepts, uh, vocabulary, that kind of thing. Third session, process. This is, gets more implemented. Now we're talking about how does Debian make decisions? How does it make technical decisions? How does it make personnel membership uh, decisions? Um, whether someone's a developer or not or loses their development status. You know, these are kind of like nuts and bolts of how we actually do things. But it also should be about um, in the best of all possible worlds, how do we make decisions? When I did these kinds of trainings, I would usually focus on this uh, C.T. Butler's uh, On Conflict and Consensus handbook written in uh, late 70s, early 80s. <clears throat> and he was encoding some Quaker, secular Quaker process uh, in terms of what he observed in activist groups at that time. So it's a it's a very cookbook style book, and I, I will promise to put a post of that up somewhere. But what I would do is say, okay, this is Butler's version of the flow chart that shows, you know, first you get the agenda set, you have introductions, you call for concerns, uh, what have you. You know, those are details of that. On your fourth session, techniques. And then get into more of the specifics of, okay, now we know the overall process. Uh, what are things you do during different parts of that process? So how do you call a group's attention? How do you deal with people who are repeating themselves? How do you keep things on topic? How do you introduce topics? How, it's like a how-to for the things you talked about theoretically before. And then uh, repeat that cycle. Perhaps you have an outside trainer that's been a consultant during this process, and maybe they'll stop after the four weeks. Maybe they'll con continue on. Maybe you have some senior uh, folks who've got a lot of history in Debian who promised to stick around for four weeks, but they're not 
going to go past four weeks. Or maybe, you know, if you can, you'll have somebody continue for another cycle so people can learn how it is this cycle continues. And if you have rolling admission, that people people can keep coming in. I don't want to spend a lot more time unless people ask me to later about um <clears throat> about those nuts and bolts. I'd rather talk about the overall idea. Uh, and I don't want people to get too specific and say this is the way we have to do it. I heard someone mention the Debian Academy idea. Uh, so here's something you could, uh, a proposal you could put underneath that concept, that, that general idea. So places in which this kind of thing has worked uh, well, um, Vagrant pointed out to me that uh, that I had forgotten <clears throat> that Latin America has a strong reputation for these kinds of uh, literacy trainings, getting huge amounts of the pop number of the population <clears throat> from illiterate to book reading in a small number of years. <clears throat> because you allow people who have got some uh, measurable simply measurable amount of competence. Say your measure is um, this person has gone through the four part, the four session cycle twice. They're now uh, being empowered to set up their own. Something as simple as that um, can cause replication, not just self-perpetuation, but replication where you have it branching off, lots of branching. Um, in a way that uh, is not a fork necessarily, meaning completely different project, but more of a supportive rolling out and delivery to a larger population. Uh, China did it quite successfully with barefoot doctors uh, getting herbal training out after uh, decades of war and, and were able to successfully get many, many people um, the kind of first aid and health, minimal health training they needed. Um, the example that I was first made familiar with was in the 1970s, <clears throat> at a time when uh, US and other European style cultures had lo uh, lost intergenerational knowledge about breastfeeding. <clears throat> so women were relying on medical doctors telling them that formulas were safer. And when that scientific education became clearly wrong, uh, uh, there was a large grassroots movement to train for women to train each other on how to breastfeed and raise children in a healthy manner. So an organization called La Leche League, which I believe is French, uh, uh, just did something exactly like this. Uh, in four sessions, you read, read a book together and you had topics that were as equivalently broad as the ones I'm describing here. And after you had gone through a certain number of sessions, uh, you might be empowered by the group to have the next a set of meetings at your house. And this uh, was, uh, as far as I know, measurably connected to the very fast reuptake of best breastfeeding as a practice in the United States. <clears throat> you know, uh, I'm not, it's only, uh, it's about 20 minutes in. That was uh, about as much as I wanted to say. I'd love to have questions because I might get some ideas about what more I was intending to say once I hear. And I need to hear that on, on IRC. Oh, so you, you. Um, Hi, Urban. Okay, the question on IRC is, is there a link to the DILIP project? I do uh, a link to the DILIP project. Uh, I have a personal web page that just has a link to a few talks, and it's at dlib-rating.org. I don't know if you can see on my uh, deliberating.org, delib-rating.org. <clears throat> Again, that 
Okay, <laughs> it's just I'm, my my personal web page. But I do I'm have uh, Wiki <laughs> and other Debian <laughs> project access, and I can post things there, and I would love to work with people on Debian pages. That would be fine. Okay. Um, Safir, can you show the link? Uh, I have it typed onto the org mode file. Uh, I can put it on. Oh, okay, I never mind. <laughs> no, Gunnar, you're great. <laughs> okay. And uh, Vagrant has posted the consensus.net uh, conflict and contents, cons, uh, OCAC contents file. And that is, I believe, a GPL-ish version of the book I was telling you about. One of my students uh, got it typeset and, and opened up. Can you show the slides again? What uh, slides are you asking for? No, oh, I was asking for the slides. It's okay. Uh, I don't know why they're not showing. If it is. No, they are showing. It's everything all right. Okay. How about ideas about uh, p possible ways in which Debian might be used, use these informations, this information. Ah, Wookie, you said that you remember the cafe conversation now? Yes. <laughs> Maybe you just didn't hear the last few 15 seconds or something you said. Could you repeat? Say again. Could you repeat the last 15 seconds we just had to cut off audio? Oh, you missed the last 15 seconds. Uh, yeah. Oh, I was just a shout, giving a shout out to Wookie, ah, <laughs> who I had right. lunch with in 2014. Thank you. Well, here's a question I have for the audience, and that is, uh, is the community team the right place for working on this kind of thing? I would guess it is. Yeah, for an answer from IRC, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I can be reached at uh, dlib at debconf.org. I found that, that that email is uh, still working for me. Uh, there's another question. I understand you would like to organize a, uh, or to organize a communication team, and your info is organizing peer-to-peer -peer Debian facilitation training. Do you mean on making a manual for organizing a team like this and instructing them before e events? Ah, I, I think that question is very important. I'm not parsing it exactly, but um, ah. so I guess the answer to that is yes, the first question. Uh, I would like to help Debian in its ongoing communications training efforts. Uh, one possible way to do that that I'm making available through this is, yes, in a sense, creating a, a training manual. I think that would be a good way to start. I like wiki writing. If people would like to uh, work on this kind of things, I could pay attention to it and help it along. Uh, I prefer in-face trainings, 
so that's a difficulty, but so then text is the next best thing. Okay, other answer. Uh, but I think another part of it. Uh, for your previous I'm question. I'm hearing another question. Go ahead. Uh, my feeling is we don't have anything better. I like the community team to be a team of generally respected people that we know to care about such aspects. But it's an organization we will have to continue to hash and make better. But it has to self-improve several iterations. Oh, yeah. And it's improvable, yeah. improvable of course. Yeah. Jewolf, uh, Gunnar, uh, yes, that is the sense I have uh, that the community team is a, you know, it, it's been an ad hoc team for so long. It's just now getting formalized in terms of what its real responsibilities are and, and methods and that kind of thing. Uh, so what responsibility it should and can have are open questions. Um, I understand that. Uh, doing trainings that allow people to train themselves might be a possible way for the community's team to have a role that has a large impact without being pushed into a more regulatory role. I think if the community's team doesn't uh, doesn't do a lot in front of the public, it will end up just being the team of last resort as it has been in the past and so this is an idea of how to be more proactive in a little less conflictual way rather than just being the folks you call when when a problem comes up right and i'm here i'm seeing irc now um pre-training people could be usable to lots of teams not just community conflict resolution of course Right. So you start with people who already have uh, either very high skills or very strong passion to learn more. Uh, I, in my experience, what I see is that uh, the, the mixes of people who come on their own to such trainings in the real world tend to be people who either want to get better at their own expertise they already have they want to learn how this organization does something they know how to do elsewhere, or they're having serious problems and either they've been told to go or they know they need some help. Uh, so you end up with a real mix of people who, who have skills and don't, which is actually fine. It's just they're all talking about the same topic. Wookie is saying uh, what you say is interesting, but we're not sure what to do with it. I think a lot of us would, could benefit from training and communicating better. Yes, I understand. I tend to be very interested in DebConf because it's a place where I see real people learning to communicate with each other in terms of, I think of everything in terms of communication. So, of course, that's what I think of. So I see real objects, bodies in spaces, learning who each other are, and then either recovering from or adding to previous online communications they've had with each other that might have just been through code they respected, and maybe not even emails, so or IRC. Uh, or maybe they just had a couple bug conflict conversations and they don't even know who each other are. So I see this real rich community coming together during DebConf. But doing it online, it needs to be a little bit more um, formal. And so that's why I would ask for a team to set it up. Someone's asking. Ah. Uh, so Vagrant mentions, uh, Debian already has many small, or perhaps many, too small teams. Should each team be offered and or encouraged to explore a set of sessions like this? Sure. I don't know. This is a kind of thing that Debian is its own, uh, Debian is its own world unto itself. And so, yes, perhaps that's the case. Perhaps. Uh, yeah, that's a real issue. Uh, another person, Amek, uh, I personally like the training system where you learn as you go and try to teach the lessons you just learned to two more people and learn some more people 
the time they need to teach, it is even more people. And that time you learn some more, et cetera. Yeah, 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 exactly. Self-perpetuating. Uh, if some of this info gets shared as online, that could be more. Yes, I think that an online manual is really a logical place to start, especially if we get it into Git or at least a wiki. I'm seeing um, flashing of information on the Jitsi screen. <laughs> I don't understand what that is. I won't worry about it, I guess. MX says again, so this could grow into Debian University. Sure. Uh, that's a reason why you might want to check out uh, the possibility of doing it with other operating systems as well. Other communities uh, don't, this is a universal need. Uh, Debian has its specifics in terms of its governance structure that will be different, uh, that are very different. But um, working with other groups, uh, maybe setting up, a, for example, there's something called peer to peer. Uh, university, and that is an online project, and folks could uh, from Debian could work through that. Ah, all right. So now I'm getting an idea that I really wanted to throw in. I forgot. Um, in terms of different groups each doing this maybe independently or with each other. Um, a different proposal that I was actually hoping more specifically to work at in Taiwan, on at Taiwan and didn't get a chance to work on was uh, this idea of kind of a show and tell. So I didn't tell you about this. I forgot, how much time do we have? Oh, good, we still have time. Um, so in DebConf Taiwan, I did a session that went very, very well, but it was unrecorded and it got some negative reviews after DebConf 18 uh, because it was unrecorded and because there's such a strong culture around openness and sharing in Debian, which is amazing. So if I did it again, I would have it, I would have, I would record it. Uh, if I went back in time, I wouldn't record it because I didn't know then what I know now. Uh, I think I made the right decision, but it did work and I think it would be safe to do it um, unrecorded. And I, I don't, I want to do this faster than I was intending. Yeah, Demian is not just a software ethics thing. It could grow into a way of organizing lifestyle. Of course, yes, it is a lifestyle. Um, so I'm not going to pay attention to IRC here and try to say this quickly because I had a lot prepared. So basically during that session, it was entitled, What Works Well in Debian? I recognized audience speakers when they raised their hands. My goal was to desensitize sensitive topics and get people who were struggling with previous wounds from conflicts that might even still be ongoing in some ways. And I asked them um, very difficult questions about what worked well and what they could use help with. Um, the Actual questions that I used are useful. I don't see where I put them in here. Um, but they were along the, the, what I did is I gave people ways in which they could answer the question that would put it in a positive sense and then ask them how they would ask for help. And I gave them very specific questions to answer about that. I should share that too. I hope I remember to share those. Um, and the results were very, very good. There were people in the room who had been into very difficult issues. The microphone was passed out. I called on people. I drew. I asked just enough questions to draw out people who were being reluctant. And I said, just enough, try to cut back folks that were long-winded um, politely. And the a result was that folks who had been on multiple sides of hard issues in the past each felt 
good remembering things that worked really well in Debian and getting and hearing from other people things that they didn't even know about that had worked well. And so what I was trying to do was set up this idea of show and 